Hello and welcome. I'm Joanna Junak and this is GFN News on GFN.tv. In today's program, Dr. Sudbat Wadan, a UK licensed medical doctor with close personal and professional ties to India, will comment on a new study on using therapeutic marijuana together with nicotine. The study examined nicotine use among customers at a medical marijuana dispensary and found that close to 40% of these medical marijuana users also used nicotine. We asked Sudpat Wadan, a UK licensed medical doctor, what he thinks about these findings. Thank you, Sud, for joining us. Can you give us your thoughts about this study? Well, look, this is not surprising. It's been very well documented over decades that there is a tendency among those using substances or abusing substances to also use other substances at the same time. So there is no surprise there. And the authors also very clearly acknowledge that. I think the big finding here is uh, specifically about the use of uh, cannabis that's used uh, as part of uh, you know, cannabis use for therapeutic purposes, as they call it, CTP in this in this article by Steinberg et al. And the interesting finding there, and I'm going to read from the uh, the sort of summary of what they've done so that I'm not missing out on anything, is that users of CTP, the, the cannabis uh, that's used for therapeutic purposes, are more likely to use nicotine products than the general population. Again, as I said, uh, that's been already known for just cannabis smokers in the past, but in this case, now they're documented that for cannabis for therapeutic purposes uses. And, and the route of administration, and this is where it gets very interesting, I think, the route of administration of nicotine products is related to the route of administration of CTP. So uh, what they're saying is that if aerosolized CTP, which is, uh, they're using it as a vape, uh, that's being used by them. What does that mean in terms of them using vapes for consuming their nicotine as well? And, and that makes for a very interesting kind of correlation that they're trying to draw from that. And, and it makes for some very new insights into user behavior. And also what does this mean in terms of the staff in the dispensary where the cannabis for therapeutic purposes is administered? What does it mean for them to be able to advise their, their users or clients uh, in this context from a harm reduction point of view? Does this use of vape cannabis products have implications for current users of combustible tobacco who are looking to quit smoking? I don't think they're going into the discussion about whether cigarette smokers, that is smokers of combustible tobacco, should or should not be getting into, uh, or should not be using uh, CTP in this case, uh, cannabis for therapeutic purposes for quitting combustible tobacco. I think the point they're trying to draw at is, is about the, the poly use, or at least the use of different substances by the same user. And here they're saying that if that user has used cannabis in the past, smoked cannabis in the past, is, and is now using cannabis in a vape form, how do you then start drawing parallels in the same user who has been smoking combustible tobacco and now potentially vaping instead of smoking? And, uh, and and that's where the kind of uh, the thinking is going in the article, uh, if I was to interpret it that way. So the, to answer your question, it is not about whether combustible tobacco smokers should be now switching to uh, vape cannabis. Of course not. I think that's not what the article is talking about. Uh, as a medical doctor, I would not start getting into this very complex topic by saying that one should be substituted by the other. Uh, these are substances that can be used, misused, and we know the effects of these products. So the point here is that if one is a smoker, as in inhaling combustible uh, form of that product, be it cannabis or tobacco, for sure there is logically, based on the chemical profile of what is being created, if you don't burn it, but actually aerosolize it, what is the likely chance of that making it less risky? And in this case, they are talking about, well, if a smoker of cannabis is switching to vaped form of cannabis in these clinics, wouldn't it be logical also to support these, if they are smokers of combustible tobacco as well, wouldn't it be logical to support them to also use vaped forms of nicotine and not combustible forms of tobacco? According to the results of a recent Gallup poll, more Americans smoke marijuana than tobacco. 
Why do you think marijuana use has overtaken tobacco use in popularity? So let me try and answer this with the knowledge I have about this. There was a very interesting paper by Hall and Kozlowski a few years ago, and I would love to pull it out and uh, perhaps we should have that as a separate conversation. But what it was talking about is how perception and usage of, uh, if I was to remember this correctly, perception and usage of marijuana over the decades and the uh, and the legal frameworks for allowing such use, uh, as we know, in, in many states across the U.S., uh, more than 20 states, cannabis is now either legal medically uh, allowed to be used or even in a, for recreational purposes. Now, this is very interesting in the context of how tobacco control and tobacco use has evolved. And uh, that paper talked about this, this sort of how the trajectories of uh, these products, their use, their regulation, and public perception has changed over the decades. So to answer specifically on um, which one is more prevalent now versus 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, I think more importantly, one should understand, and this is where public health, I believe, uh, really struggles globally. Uh, so I'll make two points here. One is public health in the interest of public health. Uh, in the interest of the health of the public, if I may say, uh, should look at not single drug or substance use and abuse. Uh, poly use of substances has been well documented over the years and people mix and match various substances for various purposes. These are all very addictive substances. Let's not get that wrong at all. Let's not forget that. But they do use different chemicals for different purposes. And, and we know that reducing one use, people tend to end up consuming the other substance and, and vice versa. And if you're talking about poly use, you're looking at a very complex mix of chemicals consumers are consuming uh, to meet their needs. Now, one could argue the needs are have been created because they're addicted to the use of that chemical and then over time the, the addiction takes over. But the fact remains that people are consuming a lot of chemicals uh, on a daily basis, a whole mix of them. And, and depending on the societal attitudes towards these substances uh, and the availability, accessibility, and in some cases, affordability of these products, uh, consumers behave accordingly. And that's, that's how it evolves. So the US is seeing a very interesting uh, spike in the use of marijuana from what you're saying. And I think uh, there's enough data to support that. The, uh, because of the availability of, uh, in, the, in the case of many states, medical cannabis, and say in the case of many other states, just recreational purposes. So where does nicotine use fit in this context? Thanks to the great effort of tobacco control folks over the last few decades, cigarette smoking has significantly gone down, but not completely eradicated in the US. We still know that there are you know, 20 to 30 or 40 million people smoking cigarettes even today in the US. And, and now, Put that in the context of the availability of reduced risk products, uh, alternatives that offer nicotine in a much safer delivery format. And in this case, let's focus specifically on electronic cigarettes. Now, the way e-cigarettes have come to be regulated in the US, the uncertainty around them, uh, the, the, the valid concerns about youth uptake, but the, the missed opportunity in offering e-cigarettes as a very clear, acceptable form of tobacco or smoking cessation in the US and the missed opportunity there of giving that off ramp as some would call it from smoking into lesser risky nicotine products uh, has been pretty much missed uh, by public health. And so that sends the wrong message to consumers, right? Uh, consumers will, smokers in this case, smokers of combustible tobacco, to be very specific, smokers of combustible tobacco will not get that message that there is something less risky available for them to continue using nicotine uh, in a safer form. But they will, of course, see a, a whole parallel track of products being made available, in this case, medical cannabis. And they think, hmm, this means that regulatory-wise, these are perhaps more okay. And that may just be a perception that may be sort of trickling into the, into the, audience, in, into the masses. And they start believing that this may be perhaps okay. Uh, the, the good news about this article, let's, let's kind of zoom out a bit, if I may. The good news from this research group, Dr. Steinberg and company uh, at Rutgers, I think they're doing some phenomenal research. If you look at the work they've done in the last few years, I think this is groundbreaking in so many ways. They're not looking at the users of these various chemicals, psychoactive substances in isolation. They're looking at the use of these risky products uh, as, a, as a whole uh, in a sort of more holistic fashion. And, and they're also then sort of overlaying that on uh, 
what is the role of healthcare providers or or service providers in this case uh, the staff at the clinics where medical cannabis is available what is the role of service providers healthcare practitioners in advising their users or clients or patients uh, on on what choices to make and so this sort of reminds me of another paper that dr steinberg and company did uh, last year and and that has that was a validation of what we found in our work uh, what i've done over the last decade in the uk sweden and india and that paper was talking about perceptions about or misperceptions rather about nicotine among healthcare professionals and uh, it highlighted that you know between 70 to 80% of the the doctors that they had surveyed in that study and 1000 plus people they had looked at thought that nicotine in tobacco products causes cancer which it doesn't as you know but that very fact that uh, there is such level of misperception among experts means that they are not in a position to advise their patients or their customers their clients whatever you want to call it in the context of where they're operating it is difficult for them to give proper advice to their patients or to their users now this we found i want to th- then connect this to what we are doing in india recently where we are working with mental health professionals and there is a huge uh, problem with substance use mostly opiate related problem in the north northern parts of india and i was working with some of the psychiatrists work psychiatrists working in some of these clinics and we wanted to raise their understanding of tobacco cessation tobacco harm reduction and repeatedly we would get pushed back by them saying you know what but tobacco use is not the problem the problem is the opiate use and we said yes of course if that's what you're there for you will focus on that but let's not forget that many of these users are also tobacco users and as we know mental health patients uh, for example in the uk we know those who consume tobacco they die 10 to 15 years earlier than the general population not because of their mental health condition they die sooner because of their in many cases tobacco related diseases and harm so not acknowledging and not addressing tobacco use in those who abuse substances such as opiates uh, is a missed opportunity and uh, the work that uh, this paper that you're referring to and the group that's doing this research is trying to kind of zoom out of single use issues but also sort of saying how does this what does this mean for the patient for the user and let's not think about our own personal ideological agenda it's about can we help and benefit the user to live a healthier and longer life I and mean, isn't that what it should all be about anyways You mentioned misinformation around the health impacts of vaping. Do you think experts need to be better informed so they can accurately advise patients? Absolutely. Experts need to be informed uh, with the right scientific evidence and some of the research that's now coming from the groups such as Dr. Steinberg and, and and some of these groups is hopefully putting a spotlight on the need to not think of single substance use as a as the only problem it is definitely an issue and it's a public health issue for sure but many times real patients or real consumers real users present with more than one issue that they are trying to trying to sort of grapple with and if you try and address only one of them most probably something else is going to go wrong somewhere else so unless you look at the, at the as a person as a whole uh, you're going to miss out on really making a tangible difference to their long term health outcomes and uh, and then that's that's a massive missed opportunity so hopefully some of this work will put a spotlight on that will will make people aware and people hopefully will uh, incorporate that into their daily practice now that's a massive leap to make now this is research then it will have to kind of make to policy and to guidelines for healthcare practitioners or or, or service providers and then there should be some training of these healthcare providers and service providers to actually incorporate into their daily practice and then we'll start seeing some real benefit to to the users of these services and these safer products out there thank you so that's all for today tune in next time here on gfn tv or on our new podcast for more tobacco harm reduction updates and on thursday we'll go for your filter will tell us about a recent speech by Brian King, the director of the ADA Center for Tobacco Products. Thanks for watching or listening. See you next time.